Hi, today we will discuss the calculations on one compartment model extravascular root of administration. What is the extravascular administration? The root of administration where the drug is going to be administered outside of this vascular system is called extravascular system. So here this root of administration include the oral root as well as the intramuscular root otherwise the rectal root. In all of these roots of administration we can observe a common point. When the drug is given by any of these root of administration, we can observe an absorption phase. After the absorption only, the drug enters into the vascular system. That means it enters into the systemic circulation. So that's why this root of administration, what we call extravascular administration. So in the extravascular administration, if you see the plasma concentration time profile, we can observe the curve like this. So here the drug is going to be absorbed and it is going to reach to the one of the maximum concentration. So this peak concentration of the drug in the plasma what we call the Cmax. And the time required for the achieving the Cmax what we call the Tmax. The maximum time required to achieve the peak plasma concentration. And again within this plasma concentration time profile you can observe the three phases. So this is the first phase and this is the second phase and finally we can observe a third phase. What is this first phase? First phase is nothing but the absorption phase. In the absorption phase, the drug is going to be absorbed from the extravascular side into the systemic circulation. And in this phase, absorption predominates the elimination. As the drug is going to be entering into the systemic circulation, the drug is also going to be eliminated. But in the first phase, the rate of absorption is greater than rate of elimination. But once the drug is going to reach to the peak plasma concentration, where the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of elimination then we can observe a downfall of the curve. So what is the second phase? The second phase is called as the post absorption phase. In the post absorption phase still the drug is going to be absorbed while the drug is going to be eliminated and in this phase the rate of elimination is greater than rate of absorption and finally the third phase is the elimination phase. So in the elimination phase the absorption of the drug is almost complete and we can observe mainly the elimination of the drug out of the body. Now if you see the kinetics of the extravascular one compartment model. So we are going to give the drug and this drug is going to be administered into the extravascular site where the drug is available for the absorption. And the amount of the drug that is available for the absorption can be indicated by the letter XA. And now this drug is going to be entering into the systemic circulation where it is present in a single compartment and the amount of the drug in this single compartment can be indicated by the letter X. Now the drug is going to be eliminated from this single compartment out of the body. So here the amount of the drug present in the plasma depends on the two factors. One is the rate of absorption and second is the rate of elimination. The absorption rate is going to be influenced by the absorption rate constant Ka. And what is the nature of this absorption? The absorption may be either zero order or first order. For example, if you are going to give the drug by the oral route, the drug is going to be absorbed from the GA tract where it shows the first order kinetics. On the other hand, if we are going to give a drug like an intramuscular where it is going to form a depot formulation and the drug is going to be slowly released from the site of uh, administration, then the drug absorption follows the zero order kinetics. In this way, the drug absorption may either zero order or first order based on the route of administration. And the elimination of the drug can be influenced by the another constant elimination rate constant. So under normal conditions, elimination always follows first order kinetics. So in this way, in the extravascular route one compartment model, the absorption may be either zero order or first order, but elimination is always first order. Now let us see the zero order absorption. So in the zero order, the rate equation dx by dt can be written as rate of input minus rate of output. What are the amount of the drug that is going to be entering into the body minus what are the amount of the drug that is going to leave out of the body. Now this dx by dt can be written as q minus k into x. Where q is the rate of input, that means the drug is coming from the extravascular side as a zero order. So the rate of absorption is constant which can be indicated by the letter q. And rate of output is the elimination which is the first order so we can write as k into x. Because in the first order the rate is not constant but it is directly proportional to the amount of the drug in the body. 
If we observe carefully, this equation just resembles another equation just like the IV infusion. And when we give the IV infusion under one compartment model, the rate equation dx by dt is equal to q minus k into x. So here the q is not the rate of uh, infusion, it is the rate of absorption which follows the zero order. So what are the equations related to the IV infusion are again related to the zero order absorption extravascular route. So here concentration C is equal to CSS into 1 minus e to the power of minus k into t as well as the CSS is equal to the Q by clearance. In the previous video we have already discussed what are the calculations involved with the IV infusion. So today let us go with the calculations involved with the first order kinetics of absorption in the extravascular route one compartment model. Now let us go with the first order absorption. Now we are going to give the drug, the drug is going to be administered into the extravascular site where the amount of the drug present is the XA. This drug is going to be entering into the systemic circulation where the drug amount of the drug present in the plasma is X and then the drug is going to be eliminated out of the body and the rate of absorption can be influenced by the absorption rate constant K and the rate of elimination can be influenced by the elimination rate constant K. Now the dx by dt is equal to rate of input minus rate of output. So what is the rate of input? The rate of input is again first order that means which is equal to K into XA and rate of output is is equal to k into x. Here you have to remember that in the first term it is k into xa but in the second term it is k into x. Here xa is not equal to x. x is the amount of the drug that is available for the absorption and x is the amount of the drug that is available for the elimination. So now by integrating this equation we will get x is equal to m into e to the power of minus k into t minus e to the power of minus k a into t where m is a constant. But again we have to convert the amount into the concentration because always we are measuring the drug levels in the terms of concentration. So x is equal to Vd into C. We know one of the relation between the amount of the drug in the body with respect to the concentration. So if we substitute in this equation we will get C is equal to n into e to the power of minus k into t minus e to the power of minus k into t. Again n is a constant. So here k is the absorption rate constant, k is the elimination rate constant and t is the time. Then what is n? n is a constant which can be written as f into x0 by vd into ka by ka minus ke. So we have to remember this constant f into x0 by vd. x0 by vd is nothing but c0. So simply we can write like fc0 into ka by ka minus ke. Now what is the relation between ka and ke? Normally, always we can observe a relation such that the absorption rate constant K is greater than elimination rate constant K. Even the ratio of the KA by KE is always greater than or equal to 3. But sometimes you can observe the flip-flop kinetics. In the flip-flop kinetics, the KA is less than KE. That means the absorption rate constant is somewhat less than elimination rate constant. Under very rare conditions only we can observe the flip-flop kinetics. And ideally, we always observe K is greater than K. And what is the C max and T max? So T max can be given as 2.303 into log of K by K by K minus K. Again, you can here observe that the denominator is K minus K. That means K is always greater than K under normal conditions. Similarly, we can write the C max. What is the C max? The maximum concentration can be achieved when the time T is equal to T max. So within this kind of equation we can substitute that T max value. So C max is equal to n into e to the power of minus k into T max minus e to the power of minus k into T max. So by getting the T max value we can calculate what is the value of C max. Let us go with the working example one. 500 mg of a drug is given by oral route and the blood samples were collected at various time intervals. The pharmacokinetics of the drug was found best fitted into the following rate equation. So C is equal to 2.5 into e to the power of minus 0.6 into T minus e to the power of minus 2.4 into T. And here calculate C max and T max. So let us see the solution to the working example 1. So this is the rate equation that is given. So what is this rate equation indicates? As already we have discussed because here two rate constants are there. 
so this red equation is just similar to this equation c is equal to n into e to the power of minus k into t minus e to the power of minus k into t that means it follows one compartment model extra vascular root and first order absorption and we should not confuse this with the other uh, kindic equation like c is equal to a into e to the power of minus alpha t plus b into e to the power of minus beta t again in this equation you can observe the two rate constants which are alpha and beta which are actually called hybrid rate constants and here this kindic equation indicates the two compartment model iv bolus administration you can easily differentiate here even it having the two hybrid rate constants but here the terms like a and b are different but in the one compartment model extravascular the constant is same which is indicated by the letter n so this equation is uh, not two compartment model iv bolus but this is in one compartment model extravascular first order absorption by comparing with this equation we can write ka as 2.4 and ke as 0.6 and again you can observe that k is greater than ke and even the ratio between the k and k is is equal to 4 similarly what is n value n is given as 2.5 so from this data now let us calculate what is the c max and what is t max now let us calculate the t max t max is given by 2.303 into log of ka by ke whole by ka minus ke so here the values are given like this n is equal to 2.5 k is equal to 2.4 and k is equal to 0.6 so here we need only ka as well as ke values so by substituting in this equation t max is equal to 2.303 into log of 2.4 by 0.6 whole by 2.4 minus 0.6 So on solving this, we will get the value of the T max as 0.77 R. So the maximum concentration of the drug in the plasma is going to be achieved after 0.77 R. And we can also convert this into the minutes. So 0.77 into 60 that gives the 46.22 minutes. So after 46.22 minutes, we can observe a maximum plasma concentration. So just for convenience, we have seen how many minutes are required, but always T max is expressed in terms of hours. So T max is equal to 0.77 R. Now let us calculate the C max. C max can be calculated by this equation, where T is replaced with the T max. Now we know the T max value as 0.77 R, and we know the n value as 2.5, and then substituting this uh, equation, C max is equal to 2.5 into e to the power of k value is given as 0.6, so 0.6 into 0.77 minus e to the power of k value is given as 2.4, so 2.4 into 0.77. So this is nothing but 2.5 into e to the power of minus 0.462 minus e to the power of minus 1.848. So this, when we take the e value, e to the power of values, we will get it is 2.5 into 0.630 minus 0.158. So by solving this, we will get the value of the C max as 1.18 microgram per ml. So C max, the peak plasma concentration achieved after the 0.77 hours, is the 1.18 microgram per ml. Now let us go with the working example two. From the above drug, calculate the half life. volume of distribution if f value is 0.8 and what will be the plasma concentration after 4 hours so with the data already we have we have to calculate half life volume of distribution and plasma concentration after 4 hours so let us go with the solution to the working example 2 and let us start with the first one half life what is half life half life is given as t half is equal to 0.693 by ke So K is given as 0.6 R inverse. So by substituting in this equation, T half is equal to 0.693 by 0.6. So by calculating this, we will get 1.15 R. So the half life of the drug is 1.15 R. Similarly, let us go with the volume of distribution. The volume of distribution V is equal to x naught by c naught. And here in the data, f is given as 0.8. And again in the question, x naught value is given as 500 mg. And what is the C naught value? C naught value is not given. Then how we can calculate the volume of distribution? And we know the n value. From the n value, we can get the what are this uh, V D value. 
So again, let us go with another equation. Fx naught by Vd is equal to n into ka minus ke by ka. So from this, we can calculate the Vd value because now we know the different data like the f value, x naught, n, ka and ke. All these values we have. So we can easily calculate the Vd value. So by substituting this equation, 0 0.8 into 500 by Vd is equal to n is given as 2.5 so 2.5 into k is given as 2.4 and k is given as 0.6 so 2.4 minus 0.6 by 2.4 so if we rearrange we will get volume of distribution vd is equal to 0 0.8 into 500 is nothing but 400 so 400 into 2.4 by 2.5 into 1.8 so by solving this we'll get the volume of distribution as 213.3 liters actually it is not the real volume it is a hypothetical volume because the real volume of the body fluids is less than 5 liters but here the volume of distribution indicates the 213.3 liters which is a hypothetical volume that means the drug is highly distributed into the body now the third one is a plasma concentration after the time t is equal to 4 hours so how we can calculate the plasma concentration let us go with the kinetic equation that is given c is equal to 2.5 into e to the power of minus 0 0.6 into t minus e to the power of minus 2.4 into t so if we substitute t value directly into this equation we will get the c value now this is equal to 2.5 into e to the power of minus 0 0.6 into 4 minus e to the power of minus 2.4 into 4 we can convert it into the natural logarithms or we can directly take the e to the power of values so by substituting this this is equal to 0.225 microgram per ml. So what are the plasma concentration of the drug after 4 hours is 0.225 microgram per ml. So in this way, with the extravascular route of administration having first order absorption, assuming one compartment model, we can easily calculate the C max value, T max value, volume of distribution, half life and and the plasma concentration after any time t. So that's about this first order extravascular one compartment model. And again, please don't forget to share this video, like this video and post your comments in the comment box. And thank you for watching this video.